you know the reason why charas is considered holy in hinduism hi guys my name is indija and i am about to tell you a story this folklore is common amongst the sadhus of north india and legend has it that charas is actually the sweat of goddess parvati as we know uh, parvati's husband lord shiva is associated with the ritualistic use of cannabis and he can be seen uh, smoking chillums in a lot of his depictions so parvati his wife used to prepare his chillums for him and that was usually uh, with the buds of the cannabis plant which is ganja one day as we all do shiva ran out of ganja so parvati decided to rub her hands and get the dirt in the sweat um and put that into the chilla when shiva smoked this he was intoxicated and quite surprised and he got mad at his wife because now people are going to get high off of her sweat apparently and thus charas or the sweat of goddess parvati came to be revered by the monks who worship shiva hinduism has a long standing tradition of using cannabis ritualistically uh in our ancient texts which are the vedas the atharva ved specifically Cannabis is mentioned as one of the five holiest plants on earth. In fact, it is said that um a drop of amrit which is uh, elixir fell from heaven and that sprouted into the cannabis plant and it's a joy giver, a gift from the heavens to human beings. Cannabis traditions in India date back um as far as 2000 years before Christ and in the Atharva Ved it is referred to as vijay which is uh, which means uh, victory and siddhi. Aside from the Atharva Ved, the Ayurveda actually mentions cannabis use uh, in medicines and as cures for various diseases. It has been mentioned uh, in different Ayurvedic texts such as Charak Samhit, uh, Sushrut Samhit, Yunani medicine, which is a combination of uh, Ayurveda and Arabic medicine, also uses cannabis in many preparations, over hundreds of preparations. Generally, uh cannabis was used cannabis mostly in the form of bhang, which is a paste made out of its leaves, uh was used to aid digestion to treat uh, diseases of the central nervous system. Modern science now knows that cannabis is an anticonvulsant, so it prevents any um diseases that cause spasms. Cannabis is also used in the treatment of depression and anxiety. Uh it was known as a joy giver and generally it's used as a sleep aid and can also uplift the mood significantly. Wrestlers and Sikh fighters were known to consume cannabis because um it made their nerves stronger, it increased their appetite allowing them to uh consume more food and hence become stronger and it was also it also made them feel less when they went to battle. It's worth mentioning that in medicine uh Ayurveda actually describes the different parts of the cannabis plant according to toxicity. In Ayurveda cannabis is almost always orally consumed and not smoked. It is put into medicines after preparation and there are various ways to detoxify cannabis and uh enhance its medicinal properties. There are many ways to purify and detoxify cannabis and use it in ayurvedic preparations. One method is through boiling uh and then adding it to milk and another method to purify and store cannabis is to soak it in water for 24 hours then dry it and then fry it in clarified butter or ghee uh to so that the oil absorbs all of the medicinal properties. This can be stored and then added to various medicinal preparations. The fact that hemp cultivation is illegal means that the mainstream use of cannabis in ayurvedic preparations is virtually non-existent these days. However, the use of bhang continues all over the subcontinent, in particularly in North India where it's consumed uh, ritualistically during Holi and this is something that's extremely common and celebrated. In fact, various high courts in the country have repeatedly ruled that bhang does not fall under the definition of um cannabis in the NDPS act the NDPS act explicitly forbids the buds which is ganja and the resin which is charas so bhang continues to remain uh, legal and you can actually apply for a license uh, to run a government license bhang shop this was an important consideration when india had first opposed uh the categorization of cannabis uh with scheduled harmful recreational drugs This was back in 1961 in the UN convention. The fact that cannabis was used ritualistically in Hinduism since the very beginning was actually a consideration that made India resist um the criminalization of cannabis worldwide. 
Despite that, an international treaty was signed and 20 years later, the NDPS Act was enacted. However, it became important to have a loophole that did not criminalize the most important religious use of cannabis, which is in the form of bhang. Ancient Vedic texts have also mentioned burning cannabis as a holy plant during havan or yagya. It's extremely important to bring back cannabis for medicinal use and in Ayurvedic preparations. That can be an alternative form of medicine that can benefit so many people suffering from chronic illnesses. Modern research has proven over time the immense benefits of cannabis medicinally. So combining Ayurvedic wisdom and modern medicine, we can actually uh, have the possibility of uh, creating effective, safe herbal remedies for patients suffering from chronic illnesses. And India could lead the way for this because we have embraced and consumed cannabis and understood its significance for thousands of years now. Let us work together to reinstate cannabis as the holy, medicinal, therapeutic plant that it is and um, work against these arbitrary provisions that uh, make it difficult for people to access the medicine that they need. So that's all for today. I hope this was informative to you and uh, like, share and subscribe as usual. Follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, follow us on YouTube and stay tuned because we're going to be back with another vlog next week. Bye.